In today's video, we are going to take a look at how we can use the Open Llama model in both Hugging Face and Langchain. So Open Llama is essentially a open source, open license version of the Llama model. So the original model I was going to show you is this SJOL Open Llama model, but it seems like it doesn't exist um, today. <laughs> So, what we're going to have to do is take a look at another open llama model and see if we can get that working in the same code. So I think we can just take one of these, maybe, maybe just the top one and we'll see. So I'm going to copy this and come to here. Now, first thing we need to do is just pip and install all the prerequisites. So we have these here, I've just run it. Um, then down to here. So this is where I had the original modern name. I reran it, realized that it's been deleted. So now what we'll have to do is just try this other one and hopefully see if it will work with the same code. I'm not sure if it will. I might need to try a few different open LAM models in order to find one that does. But let's give this one a go. One thing you should actually check before running this because this will take a little bit while for down for the model to download is if you're on a collab uh, or anywhere else but if you're on collab this is how you do it you go to runtime you change your runtime type and i'm going to make sure i'm on gpu you need a fairly good gpu as well so i'm on a100 here with the high ram setting on collab you need i think it's or at least for the previous model i'm not sure what exactly uh, this model requires but in the previous model I was using around 28 gigabytes of GPU memory. So just be aware of that. You could technically run it on CPU, but you will literally be waiting forever. So I, I wouldn't personally even bother doing that. Uh, you really do need GPU to run this. Okay, so this is a promising start. So before again, so this is a tokenizer. The tokenizer handles the translation of basically human readable plain text into transformer or LLM readable tokens. And hopefully I can show you what I mean by that. Okay, so tokenizers vary by model. That's why we had to put in the model name here as well. Now, okay, you can kind of see what these tokens look like, right? So uh, this is a bad example. Do I have, okay, let me show you this example, right? So the token user, so this is like a text, right? That translates into this token ID. This token ID is what will be fed into the transform model. The token for colon, uh, this translates into this ID here, right? So yeah, that's basically what this does. The tokenizer translates from the human readable plain text into these token IDs. Uh, but anyway, let's, let me explain what we're doing here. Right, so we need to define something called stopping criteria of the model. What you'll find with OpenAI models is that they will generate text and then they will stop at a point that is pretty logical. Now, when we're doing this on, like with open source models on our own hardware, they're basically, we're working from scratch. So, what that means is that the model is actually going to, in most cases, keep generating text and it might not necessarily know when to stop. So we need to help it understand when to stop. And that's why we set up this stopping criteria. Okay. So you can think of, right, these models, they're just generating text and they will keep on going, keep on going. So in this scenario, we're going to be using this as like a conversational AI chatbot. So we know that, well, well, actually we know that it should stop in two places, either when the model tells us it should stop. Okay, so that is when we would see this EOS token, so end of sequence token. And we can detect that as a token ID of zero in for this model. Okay, but in reality, it might, it's probably not going to do this all the time, or at least with this model, I don't, with the previous open line model, I didn't see it use it even once, I, I don't think. So maybe that's just something that this model isn't very good at, I'm not sure. But 
instead what we can do is we know we're going to be used creating like conversation or like a conversation log. So we know that the format of this conversation log will be like this, okay? So user, assistant, user, and the model will probably follow this format, okay? So what we would have is our query, it's gonna be formatted like this, okay? And then we're gonna have this, right? And this is what we're gonna feed into the model. From here, it's gonna start generating the answer, which is, will be this here. And then it's gonna keep going, and it's gonna to get to user again. Okay, because it's creating that chat log. So we know that once it hits user again, we see that and we say, okay, now you need to stop. You've actually finished a bit that we want you to generate. So what we can do is we take user followed by colon and we convert those into tokens. The reason that we don't just put these together like this is because that will actually give us an unknown token. Okay, so you see this zero. So you can see, the unknown token, right, for is, is user ID or, or user. Sorry, let, let me do it here. It makes more sense to me. Okay, we convert this user into token and we get this zero. If we then take a look at the unknown token, UNK unknown, we're going to see the same thing. It's that zero, right? And then we can actually convert that back into a token and we get this, right? So that is basically, if the model doesn't recognize a particular token, it's just going to put unknown because it hasn't seen everything. And what these tokenizers do is they basically break things up into parts. So in reality, what this one will do is something more like this. So it's gonna, when it sees some te incoming text, it's gonna break it up into what we see up here. Now, Based on that, I know that the end of speech token here is not set up correctly uh, with this model. It was with the previous model, but it clearly isn't with this model because it's just recognizing it as a unknown uh, token, which is, it makes sense because it's actually just blank. So I wonder if maybe we can identify that another way. Let's go to here, maybe it's EOS. Let's see if this comes up. No, so unfortunately, unknown. So I'm not sure what the end of speech token is for this specific model, but we're gonna be using this as our stopping criteria anyway. So it's not, ideally we should know it, but I, I don't know what it is. So we'll just have to leave it there. Oh, maybe it's here actually. Let me try this. Okay, so this is our end of speech token, right? So this means it's the end of the line for our generation. Okay, so token ID two. Okay, cool. So basically up here, this should be that, but it's fine, we'll leave it. So what we would see frequently when we would like the model to actually stop we can set those as these stop token IDs. So that's what I'm doing here. With the previous model, I saw system come up a lot. Obviously, if it starts to generate another assistant message, it should stop there as well. So these are going to be our stopping criteria. Okay, I can see another unknown here. So assistant, what I can do is just tokenizer. And I think I can just pass in assistant. So the input IDs for that would be this. So let's take those so I understand how that is broken up. So I'm gonna take this, tokenizer convert IDs to tokens. And I'm just gonna take this. So it's an unknown token, which is odd, but okay. Assistant, ah, interesting but it's assistant written differently. Okay. Well, they all stop with this here, so I can probably just assume that would be the uh, the end of that one. But what is that? Just this. So what I'm gonna do is just put that in there directly, like this. Okay, I'm gonna take out that first item. 
Okay, not perfect, but yeah, we're using a different model here, so I'm trying to figure out as we go along. Okay, so then what we want to do is convert these into long tensor objects. So this is just the format that we would expect, or that it will expect to uh, for these stop criteria or stopping criteria. Okay. Uh, yeah, we do want to check that there are no unknown token IDs in there, and there are not. Okay. And then we're going to use this code here. So we come down to here and we have our like the, the stopping object for our items. So basically we'll just stop token I stop token IDs that we created here. It's going to go through each of these and it's going to check if they appear at the end of what has been created so far in our input IDs. So this these are like the generated token IDs. If that does appear Right. If, if the ending token IDs match up to the stop, any of those stop IDs, right? So we're going through in the loop. We're going to say return true, which means it's time to stop. Okay. And yeah, we, we just initialize that stopping criteria and then, okay. Yeah. So here I'm just passing in a random sequence here, but basically this random sequence does not end with that stopping criteria. So we should see that it will return false. Now, if we return it to something that is an actual stopping criteria. So what's this? 5303 and 95657. Let's check that that is actually okay. It's not. So I'm going to replace it with this. Okay. Let me put that in there and let's see. We should see true. Okay. Cool. Okay. So it will stop if it sees that stopping criteria. All right. Okay. And now we're ready to initialize our hugging face uh, pipeline. So the moment of truth where we see if this actually works with the new model or it will be in a moment generate text okay looks good let's just run this see how it goes okay so we don't get a great generation but i'm happy at least the code works with the new model so let me go through and explain what we're actually setting in here so okay model and tokenizer we set those basically we're going to tokenize and i'm going to use the model for generation cool Return full text. So we only set this because we're going to later on use Langchain. If you're not going to use Langchain, you don't need to set this, but basically we're just returning everything because that is what Langchain is expecting you to do. So you should basically return what you have put into the model and also what the model is bringing back to you. Uh, otherwise, you, it doesn't really matter. You don't need to set this. Okay, we're doing text generation. Device is the CUDA enabled GPU. Stopping criteria, that's what we initialized before. And then we just have a load of like model parameters here. So temperature, we can think of this as randomness. Top P, so Cohere, have a good article on this. If you type in Cohere, top P, top K, it will come up with that article. I'd recommend reading through that. Basically, this is going to say, you know, for every token, we're predicting the probability across all the possible tokens. And this is going to say we will select or we're going to restrict our selection to the top tokens whose probability adds up to that 15%. Okay, because we're at 0.15 in there. Another alternative that we can use, we're not using it here because we've set top K to zero, is we select from the top K tokens, right? So rather than selecting from the top tokens that add up to a probability of 15%, we can select from like the top three tokens or you know something like that. Okay. Max new tokens, so how many tokens we might predict. Okay, we're setting the a limit on there. And then repetition penalty. So this is basically if the model starts repeating itself, we should increase this number uh, to hope we prevent that. And we're kind of seeing that here. Okay. So explain to me the difference between nuclear fission and fusion. So we can see that here, right? So we're return, we've got return all equals true. So it says nuclear fusion is the reaction that powers the sun or nuclear fission is a process by which we create energy for our power plants. Okay. And then it's repeating itself a bit, but not quite. But then by the time we get here, it's just repeating, uh, yeah, it's repeating a lot. So we can probably maybe increase the repetition penalty if we want, but I, I don't necessarily think we need to. Well, once we get to the conversation anyway, because we're going to be able to put in that stop. But let's, I mean, let's just see what we get, right? So you can see, 
Nuclear fission is when two or more atoms are combined together in a reaction that releases energy, while nuclear fission occurs when an atom splits into smaller pieces, releasing energy. The process of splitting apart atoms we use power generation as well as other applications such as medicine. I don't know if that last bit is true, but okay. Um, and then we we get like more questions, but you can see that the repetition is greatly decreased there. Although this, I think this is a high repetition penalty. So maybe we just go 1.2 or something for now and we can modify it later on if we need to. Okay, so this is different now that we've changed the model. So you can just ignore everything I'm saying here. But what I want to do is we're going to create a prompt that tells the model to actually, rather than just answer a question, we're going to be chatting with the model. Okay, so we're gonna have conversation going on. So for that, we're gonna switch over to Langchain. Okay, so we have a prompt template here. Yeah, I think most of you have probably seen this. If not, I have an entire video series on Langchain. So you can take a look at that. There'll be a link to that somewhere in the video right now. But basically, we're gonna format everything and that query that we had before would go in here, okay? And then there would be this, and then we would ask the model to generate from there. So let's run this. Now, the prompts, depending on what model you're using, prompts are pretty important and they can change the behavior of the model pretty significantly. So I'm not sure if this will work because we, you know, I changed the model, but let's see what we get. Okay. So, okay. That looks actually pretty good. Right, so we can see that nuclear fission is this, nuclear fusion is this. Okay, cool. And then it went on to user, and we have a stopping criteria for user, right? So I wonder if maybe I can just remove that stopping criteria and we can see what would happen if we did not have that in there. So let's, you know, just to see. Now run this again, run this, and let's see what we get. Okay, so you can see that the model without that stopping criteria just continues the conversation. Okay, and that is to be expected because the model is just, it's basically like a very good autocomplete. So it's just gonna keep going and keep going. It doesn't know that it's supposed to stop. So yeah, we, we do need that stopping criteria in there. Very <laughs> clearly important. Uh, so we set that we can generate again, okay? And then we, we see that user and we stop. Obviously, because we have user in there, we know we just need to remove that, okay? So actually, so output, oh, output here should be user. Okay, so, you know, I can maybe print that as well so it's in the same format. So basically all we've done is we just remove that suffix. Obviously, there are other suffix that we might see in there, so we would basically just you know, create a loop and go through each one of the suffixes that we've included in that possible uh, stopping criteria. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to use the chains component of Langchain. Again, if you're not entirely sure what chains are, that's like the third video in that Langchain series that explains that. Okay, suffix, is that correct? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so basically a chain is just a, it's like a component in LangChain. LangChain is built around chaining chains together. And what we're doing here is just creating a custom chain. Now it looks kind of scary, there's a lot of code in here, but in reality, most of this is just boilerplate code. The only bit that I changed, right, is I added these suffixes in here as a attribute for the class, and then I modified the call here. Okay, so the call is where most of the action is in this. So we have our inputs and we pass them into our prompt template. So the prompt template we saw before, it's just this. Okay, and we can, we're basically, this new chain that I created is the same as this LLM chain, which basically takes the, your inputs, formats them with the prompt template, passes it to an LLM. This is basically doing the same thing. It's just we've added a little bit of extra logic. So, yep, here we're formatting the prompt based on your inputs. We generate a response using the LLM. And then we are here, right? So we're just removing the, the suffix, okay? 
remove suffix. Oh yeah, okay, so we're looping through each of these. Uh, where are they? Here. So we're going through each of these, and if we see those at the end, we just remove them. Okay, and, and that's it, that's all we're doing. So yeah, th that's it, and then here we're just stripping any leftover spaces from the, the left of that. So we have the L strip there. And yeah, we're returning the output key. So output key is just a, it's a thing that that uh, line chain does. I think usually it's, oh yeah, so text. Basically, it's just gonna return your dictionary where it says text and then it responds, it returns that generated text for you. And then finally, I'm calling that method with the predict method in here, okay? So we're gonna have our query that gets passed to predict. It formats your query into a dictionary. This is just like typical Langchain logic. I'm not doing anything fancy here. And then just returns that. Honestly, it's probably overcomplicating things with this <laughs> little bit here, but I'm just doing it stick with, I think probably the default way of doing things. So once we have initialized that class definition, we are going to initialize it with our LLM and with our prompt. So you can see like this is basically the same as what we did earlier. If I just copy this, bring it up to here, the LLM chain is exactly the same. It's And that's because this is the same. It's just a slightly modified version of the LLM chain where we have that ex those extra um, post-processing steps for our text. Okay, so now what I can do is I'm going to say, explain to me the difference between nuclear fission and fusion, and it will handle everything uh, together. So nuclear fission is when atom does this, nuclear fusion is when two or more atoms combine. Okay. And yeah, that is it, right? That is how we would go about building almost like a, it's not quite a chat interface here, there's a little bit of extra work that needs to be done. But with that, it's you just basically need to add some logic around it to actually create that chat. You can feed in. So as the conversation is progressing, what you do is with each message, you just add it to like a chat history and append it to the previous prompt within the uh, the prompt template that you, you, you've created. And then with that, you basically have a chatbot using Open Llama rather than you know, Open AI or, or some other models. So yeah, that is it for this video. I hope this has been useful. Uh, sorry for the you know, last minute change of models, but it seems to me that this actually worked pretty well with this other model as well. So uh, that went surprisingly well. But anyway, I hope this has all been useful and interesting. Uh, thank you very much for watching the video and I will see you again in the next one. Bye.